remember all the times when Jesus met demons in the Bible? That's right. And they they humbled themselves before him. Yeah. They said, Thou the only one of God, we know who thou we know who you are. Don't do this to us. Don't do that to us. Don't think that that I mean that world, that that satanic dark world of the devil and his angels is incredibly corrupt. But let me tell you something. They know who has the authority. Yeah. 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 That's right. And the authority is your Savior. And every time there was an encounter between Jesus Christ and the devil, the devil lost. The devil's lost. Notice here, verse number 4. Will he make a covenant with thee? I don't know what all that that means, but there had to have been some kind of an agreement between God and the devil in the beginning. And the devil gets a certain amount of time. I think that's why in Revelation chapter 12, right at the end of the chapter... It says the devil is he's angry, he comes down to earth because he knows his time is short. Now how would he know his time is short? Unless he's been allowed a certain amount of time to operate and do as much damage and destruction as he can. And God would bless those who would trust the Lord and damn those that would look to, look to the devil. And notice here in verse number 5, I love this one. Wilt thou play with him as with a bird? <laughs> Wilt thou play with him as with a bird? Or wilt thou bind him for thy maiden? All I'm saying is that Jesus Christ had power over the devil when he was on this earth. The scriptures make that clear. Go back to Luke chapter 4. Go back in the Gospels. Luke chapter 4. Look at this one. Verse number 33. Luke 4, 33. You know, by the way, if you think you're going to get over on God, the devil's not getting over on God. Yeah. If you think you're going to get over in God, if you think you can get away with sin, if you think that one day there's no price to pay for your stubbornness and rebellion, the devil knows better than you do. The devil knows exactly where he ends up. He can read the Bible just like you can read. He can read Revelation chapter 20. He can read the last chapter and say, oh, I end up in the lake of fire. Well, like that. He can read. But I'll tell you, sometimes Christians think they're never going to pay a price for their sin. Somehow it's going to be different with them than it is with everybody else. But somehow they can sin, get away with it. It's not going to cost them like it costs others. It won't cost them the price that the Bible says. You know what? Don't be a fool. Even the devil knows there's going to be a price to pay for the, for the liberty that he's allowed to have for this 6,000 years and the damage that he's allowed to do. Notice in verse number 33 of Luke chapter 4, In the synagogue there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean devil, and cried out with a loud voice, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace. Imagine Jesus Christ could speak to the devil and tell him when to shut up. Be quiet. Hold your peace. Don't say a word. The authority of your Savior, the power of your Savior, to command the winds, to lay the waves down flat, to heal diseases, to cast out devils, even in a sense to play with Satan as with a bird. The devil has to, the devil has to operate within certain limits. Notice it says here, verse number, um, it says, And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him, and heard him not, and they were all amazed, and spake among themselves, saying, What a word is this? For with authority and power he commanded the unclean spirits, and they come out. Look at verse number 4. Uh, I'm sorry, Colossians chapter 2. I was with that. Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. The greatest confrontation that Jesus Christ and Satan had was, of course, not when he was healing people, but when he himself was made sin, when he was on the cross. I wish we had the time to go back and look at Psalm 22 if you want to read it sometime on your own. If you want to see what the battle between Jesus Christ and the devil looked like from the Lord's point of view when he was on the cross, you read Psalm 22. And it says in Psalm 22 that the bulls of Bashan had surrounded him. A word, a, a statement meaning the devil's. And the dogs, the Gentiles, were all about him. And that they, the, the devil uh, gaped upon him with the mouth like a ravening lion. So Jesus Christ was surrounded by those invisible devils. We've talked about it many times. 
I don't think any devil in the planet was doing anything other than at that cross that day. And there wasn't anything more important than that, except to keep abuse and scorn and ridicule and reproach upon their great enemy, Jesus Christ. They were all there that day. I mean, I don't know what it must have looked like from the cross as Jesus Christ looked out over that invisible sea of devils. And they're all just looking toward him and gaping upon him and ridiculing him and tearing at him. And yet, he overcame them all. He overcame them all. Praise the Lord. And it says in Colossians chapter 2, look at verse number 15. Remember about the strong man who spoils the other strong man's palace? In other words, robs him of his goods, takes away the things that were once his. Satan had and owned and owns all of mankind. Jesus said to the Pharisees, you're of your father the devil. That's, that did, he didn't mean that they were just nasty, despicable people. He meant you are of your father the devil. And until you are born of Christ, you are still of the devil. 